Hey, so this is a beginner's tutorial on how to bake lights in Unity. This is specifically how I approach most lighting when it comes to my VR chat world. And so I'm just going to go through the process step by step and hopefully give you a good understanding of how to do it. So the first thing I like to do is edit my Unity settings and change my pixel light count from th usually this is three to begin with. I'm going to change it to something much higher, like 25. In my bigger projects, I usually just bump that up to 99. Um, basically, this refers to the amount of lights that can interact with any single object in your scene. And so you want that to be pretty high. So if you have a lot of lights affecting objects in your scene, they are affected by all the lights there. Um, if this isn't high enough, you'll generally be able to tell by... Uh, lights flickering in the unity editor uh, The next thing I like to do is go to my light settings uh, And you can get here by going to window rendering light settings, which is this window here um, Always I always turn off auto generate basically this is going to generate lights Automatically when you change a light from real time to baked and it's really annoying. So I always turn it off um, So all these settings here you can affect however you want depending on what's in your world. Uh, the settings I'm going to show you are basically what I generally use when I bake lights in my worlds. So um, environment lighting, I usually always use gradient, and now you can see the scene lights are being affected by these parameters instead of the skybox. Environment reflections, I always do custom, and I'm going to bake a reflection probe in this scene separately from this, and then I'm going to insert it after the fact. I usually always have real-time lighting off and then mixed lighting, and this is your baked lighting information, usually have that on. And for light mapper settings, I usually use Enlighten. Uh, these settings should be fine for this and then 1024 is a good light map size, I think, for what we're doing here. Once again, you can affect all this stuff however you'd like and change these settings to be whatever it works for you. If in light, sometimes I'll get bake errors or the bake will freeze with certain with a certain light mapper and then I'll switch to something else and try it again. Um, but yeah, for this, this should work fine. So we're gonna keep that there. The next thing we're gonna do is actually place our light. So I like to go to create, um, I'm just gonna make a new game object, call it lights. Uh, I'm going to bring the default directional light, bring it in, and we're going to just going to start changing the settings to um, to be whatever we want. So I just rotated that, um, but you can see I've got the rotator selected there. I'm going to go back to this. Uh, for the lights, we're going to make sure the mode is baked. You can change the color to anything you want. I'm going to change the indirect multiplier to like 0.2. Indirect multiplier refers to lights bouncing off your objects and hitting other objects. Um, I generally keep that pretty low. You actually don't see that being affected until after you bake. Um, I'm going to keep the intensity at 1. My worlds are pretty dark usually, so I usually have this like way down, but this is fine for this. And I'm going to keep shadow type on soft shadows because I want shadows in the scene. Um, let's create another light. I'm just right click on this game object. You don't even have to right click on the game object, but I'm going to do light point light and I'm going to make sure that it's organized under there. I use point lights a lot and I'm just going to move this into place and then I'm going to change the setting here. I'm going to give it a nice warm tone, change the mode to baked and then intensity. We're Let's bring it a little bit lower and then I'll bring that low. I do want shadows, so I'm going to change that to soft shadows. So I've got that light with how I want it, so I'm going to press Ctrl D. I'm going to drag it over and now I've got two point lights in the scene. Um, everything is still real time. Our lights are set to baked, which is what we want. Um, and I'm going to add, I'm going to do a spotlight. Generally, I'll use spotlights for like the lights that are on the ceiling and I'll just point it down from the ceiling and then make the spot angle bigger. We're going to want that to be baked. I'm going to change that to down there to 0.2 and then use a warm tone. Um, and then 
I'm going to add shadows because I want shadows. And we're going to move this to be right over the couch. How about that? And um, so I think for this scene, those lights are good. Those lights are good to me. So next, for placing, we're still placing stuff. Um, next, we're going to do a reflection probe. So this is going to affect the reflections in your scene. So let's go to light, reflection probe. And it's going to give us this thing. And basically, we're going to change this box to be to hit everything we want it to interact with. And so I'm just I'm just moving it over the entire scene here because I want it to be affected. By the, I want everything to be affected by it, and that should be good. We you can you can increase like the the si the resolution size of the reflection probe, but basically the image that this grabs is going to be used to to show reflection on the objects that you have. So the reflection probe is in the scene. Let's add. Um, Let's add light probe groups. So light probe groups are very important because all of our lights are baked. So meaning they're gonna be like cooked into the scene. So there's not gonna be any real time lights to be affected on objects that move like pickup objects or characters moving around in the scene. So what light probe groups do is kind of save that information of the lighting in the scene. And so from the information that the light probe groups save, they will uh, give that information to characters and pick up objects so it'll be as if your character is being affected by the lighting in the scene. So for this we're just going to throw this all over the place. We're going to press this button over here and we're going to select all the probes and I'm just going to press Control D. I'm going to duplicate it, bring it up, select all, and I'm just pressing Control D and I'm duplicating this all over the scene. I'm going to select all again. Control D, Control D, Control D. And that seems like enough for this world. So for your space, just throw it all over the place. Um, and then that's it. We have lights in the scene. Everything is set to baked. We have a reflection probe in the scene. So we're, our objects are going to have reflection. And then there's light probes in the scene. And so now, now we want to now we want to bake, but before we bake, we need to make sure that all the objects in the scene are ready to get, to get baked and everything is set up the way we want it to be set up. So to do that, first thing you need to check is to make sure that all your objects that you want light to bake on is set to, to static or light map static. Um, so if we select like the bed here, we can see that this object is not static. Well, if we select like the actual mesh, it is not static and we want it to be static. So basically, you just click it, click static, and that's how you do it. Um, all these objects are under one game object, so I'm just going to click this game object, press static, and then it's, it's going to ask if I want to enable static for everything, and I'm going to say yes. And so now everything in this scene is static except for this plane, which isn't under the that game object so we're gonna have to select it separately press static and now everything is static and more specifically light map static meaning the lights are gonna bake on this object so that's the first thing you do make sure that all the lights you want to all the objects you want to have baked are set to static now we have all these meshes in here and we need to double check that all these meshes have light map um, sometimes when you download assets from the asset store or get assets from some places they won't have pre-made light maps with them these objects do not have pre-made light maps with them so you're going to want to go and find the fbx files for these meshes so we're going to go into this pack and this is my pack this is my free furniture pack which is on my booth for free if you want it i'll put a link in the description um, we're going to go to the fbx file and there are all, all the FBX object files for everything in here is here in this folder. Um, you could to find this, you could also click on any object, and this will work with any objects you have in your scene. Um, go down to the mesh, hit the mesh, and it'll bring up 
If you just click this, it'll bring you to the folder where the mesh is, and that's where you can affect the light maps at. I'm just going to select all these objects. I'm going to go into the inspector, go down to generate light map UVs, click that, and press apply. Like I said, for some objects that you download, um, a, lo a lot of objects that you download will have its own custom light map UVs. Uh, this one specifically doesn't, and if you get a bad bake on your objects, it might mean that um, it might mean that there are no light map UVs with it. So make sure you have generate light map UVs checked. All right, so we just waited for that to get finished, and now that that's done, um, now that all these have light maps or light map UVs, now we can go to the meshes and affect them individually. So um, when you bake. It's creating, so all these objects are put on the light maps in Unity when you bake. And uh, it basically, it's like a texture going over all your objects. And to get a more higher res texture for your light maps is you can, you can increase your light map size. And you can go to each individual mesh in the scene and increase how big it is in the light map. And I usually like to go to all my objects and increase these. Um, if it goes too big, um, you'll get this error or you'll get this notification here. Object size in light maps has reached the max atlas size, meaning this object is bigger than the light map texture. So I like to go to all these objects and just increase these to something that'll work. Um, So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do five. Five should be good. Um, if you get, if you like increase it just a little bit and you get that notification, increasing the light map size will allow you to increase how big they scale in the light maps. So I found increasing the light map, how big they are in the light maps by doing this gives me better bakes for each object. And if you have an object where you're getting like weird bake issues and errors and stuff on, on the objects, increasing it a little bit more could help fix it. But I think that's good. Our objects have generated light map UVs. Our objects have been scaled in the light maps to a, a size that I think is good. And all these objects are static. So now all we have to do is actually bake. So we're going to go to the light settings here, and then we're going to go all the way down to generate lighting and, and then wait for it to finish and look at it. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so the bake is finished. We can see that the light map size down here is 10 megabytes for everything in here. Um, and it looks pretty good. I'm looking at these objects, so like you see like little artifacts here, things like that. So if we increase this to like something bigger, that could help fix it in the next bake. Um, we have it here too, so let's just increase that. Um, but for the most part, it looks really good. If we go back to our light settings right now, um, all the all the reflections that we're seeing is coming from the reflection probe. Sometimes you'll have objects that aren't being affected by the reflection probes in your scene, which is where the environment reflection comes in. Um, you can change this to skybox so that it's reflecting the sky, but I usually like to do custom and to find where that um, this reflection probe images, you just have to find your scene. It'll, when you generate light maps, it will generally make a new folder that is the same name as your scene. You just go in there, and here is the reflection probe. And I can just move this cube map and bring it into there. And now, environment reflections are using this reflection probe. And Ultimately, that's good. We could bake again. I, I increased the um, the scale of these objects in the light map, so we could bake again and try to get a better bake, which um, I guess I'll do that right now. So let's try that out. Let's go back to lighting. We changed some things, so let's press generate lighting, and then we'll come back to see how it looks once it's done. 
All right, so that just finished baking. Let's look at the object and we can see that some of those artifacts are gone and it looks better. So obviously with your project, you just keep keep changing things until you're, you're getting results that you like. And we can see that the light maps that are down here now have been replaced with the new bake. And since we reference this uh, cube map, it should automatically go to the new cube map because it baked again. So that's generally it. We can see that the light map size for this is 13 megabytes, which is pretty big. And we can do some stuff to get that down. And I will show you how to do that. Basically, these light maps are like textures and you can compress them just like any texture. So we are going to select all of these by using shift. And now we have the, um, the settings for the objects here. I'm just gonna go down and I'm gonna change this to, since we baked at, um, we baked at 1024. So these are probably already that size. I'm gonna take it down even further. Then I'm gonna do use crunch compression and we'll keep the quality at 50. I'm gonna press apply and it's gonna compress these light maps. Uh, to be smaller and we can see they're compressed. We can take a look at the um, what it looks like in the scene. It still looks pretty good. I mean, we got some more artifacts here and, and we can see we had artifacts from the bake that we could have fixed by increasing the light map UVs or increasing the scale of this object in the light maps, um, but, but this is fine. And I mean, ultimately the, the actual quality of the light of the bake didn't change too much from doing that. And now if you look at your light settings, the light maps take up three megabytes instead of 13. That's, that's how you bake lights in Unity. I hope that helped. If you ask me how to bake lights, I will probably send you this video for now. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess that's all I got for you people. Bye.